conference started here. Can everyone hear us fine? Yes. Okay. What about that mic there? Okay. All right. So good afternoon. On behalf of CU Citizens for Peace and Justice and the Carrington family, I would like to thank all the concerned citizens and the members of the press for coming. My name is Aaron Ammons and I am one of the co-founders of CU Citizens for Peace and Justice. During this press conference, you will hear several important pieces of information shared by myself and two other members of Champaign-Urbana Citizens for Peace and Justice, along with a statement that will be offered by a member of the Carrington family. My role today is to share with the public a brief statement from CU Citizens for Peace and Justice and conduct the flow of this press conference. So this statement from CU Citizens reads as follows. CU Citizens for Peace and Justice is a group of concerned citizens who are committed to the principles of nonviolence. We condemn all acts of violence, whether perpetrated by the police department against average citizens or average citizens against one another. On the heels of the nationwide day of outrage against senseless gun violence that CUCPJ and various members of the campus community, religious community, and the broader community participated in, another young man was shot several times in the area of Bradley and McKinley, and we, the members of CU Citizens for Peace and Justice, want to publicly denounce this senseless act of gun violence. We are equally as outraged and disappointed about that act of violence as we are about the shooting death of Kiwan Carrington. All past and future functions, demonstrations, marches, and protests organized by CU citizens have been and will continue to be governed by the principles of nonviolence. We attempt to provide good examples, modeling, and we work diligently to educate our citizenry about the benefits of nonviolence as a means of resolving conflict and affecting needed change. There will be more from us on seminars, workshops, and teach-ins about the power and benefits of nonviolence in the near future. Thank you. There will be time for questions and answers at the end of the press conference, and copies of all statements will be provided to the press. I will now turn you over to Mark Insulin um, as he carries us further into the press conference. My name is Mark Enslin. I work with CU Citizens for Peace and Justice, and I'm going to read a brief statement about the events in October and the climate and policies surrounding them. On Friday, October 9th, 2009, two unarmed 15-year-olds, Kiwan Carrington and another youth, were accosted by Champaign officers, including the chief of police, at the place where Kiwan stayed. Kiwan was shot and killed. The other was arrested, at first for burglary, these charges since have been dropped, and then for felony ag aggravated resisting a peace officer and was taken to jail. Something is fundamentally wrong with police procedure where a mistaken assumption about a burglary leads to guns drawn, ransacking of a home, and killing of a young person, with the chief of police present. CU Citizens for Peace and Justice are calling for resignation of, chief of Champaign Police Chief R.T. Finney, dropping of all charges against the arrested youth, a rewrite of the new use of force policies which allows police to shoot to kill to prevent the arrest from being defeated by resistance or escape, quote unquote. Independent Citizen Police Review Board with subpoena power no tasers. Protect our rights of freedom of movement. Police need to stop racial profiling, ID checks, forced quote-unquote consent searches, jaywalking tickets, and noise violations that have become the common form of harassment in North Champaign. The family, uh, I don't know if anybody from the family wants to make a statement. Basically, I'm not, my name is Rhonda Williams. I'm the aunt of Kiwan Carrington, and I'm speaking on behalf of the family. The report is getting ready to be released tomorrow, and I don't feel that we're going to get a fair shake as far as the report. And the reason being is because the officer is back on the job, probably has never left. Finney is able to retain his position on the job. And more or less to me, it's like 
a slap in the face and a pat on the back. This officer has been involved in two murders so far in Champaign County. One, my nephew, an unarmed youth, and back in 2000. So more or less it's like a slap in the face as far as our family goes and a pat on the back for Officer Norbert. I really believe that we need to have an independent investigation besides Champaign County investigation, whether it's the state police or what, I think we need a higher investigation to go, in order to get a fair shake and a federal investigation because to me Champaign County has been corrupt for years and it's time for it to change. Good afternoon all, my name is Terry Townsend. Uh, does the family want to say something else? You need any something? Wait, wait a minute. Do, do you want to say something? I wait to the family. Okay. Hang on for a minute. Did she want to say something? Basically, I think I spoke out for my mother as far as saying that she feels that it's a slap in the face as far as having the report. And there's no way that I will ever feel closure. And there is no way that I will ever feel that this is going to be a justifiable murder because it is not. There was an unarmed youth and it could have been some other type of professional way that they could have took him down and you will never ever get me to believe that he resisted or he scuffled with the police because he intimidated by him. And he's also a timid 15 year old youth that looks like a baby almost, child. So there's no way that I will have closure because he is not here to his, his side of the story and I would never ever believe that he resisted the police because he probably was more or less shocked or scared he would have never resisted or scuffled with the police. Did you want to say something Chris? Uh, good afternoon my name is Terry Townsend. Uh, we have petitioned our government for affirmative action into the shooting death of Kiwan Carrington. As expected, their responses to our, our requests have been unsatisfactory. We are confident that by taking the next step, that is seeking outside help, that this coalition is doing what is necessary and prudent for the Carrington family and all families to receive justice in such matters. This action is taken in part because preparation of the facts in this case may be flawed. The state police led investigation into the shooting death of Kiwan Carrington has been completed and turned over to the state's attorney. Yet at least one eyewitness was never interviewed. A full and complete preparation of the facts necessary in order for the state's attorney to determine if applicable law in this case was broken uh, needs to be done. We are unable to construct, and this is the second part, we are unable to construct a theory in this case because of what happened because of the local authorities will not release the alleged phone call to the Champaign police, nor will they release the MedCAD audio. Be reminded, in the police versus Harvard professor Henry Louis Gates, they released the content of a telephone call to the police. In the recent Washington police killings, they released the content of the telephone calls. Yet in Champaign-Urbana, they won't do that. Local officials refuse to release the content of the alleged phone calls to police, even though they have released the time and date of the alleged call raises additional questions, questions which have not been answered at a local level satisfactorily. Therefore, we will seek outside help in this matter. <laughs> 